3D printed meteorite space Legos, a loose kinkajou in Washington, and hey, has anyone seen my soccer field? Hey, I'm Greg Ott, and we've got all these weird science-related news stories coming your way right now on your daily news refresh. So to begin, are you familiar with space Legos? If you're a Lego fan, I'm sure they sound familiar. From space shuttles to vintage galaxy explorers, to this idea for an homage to that old Millier film. Space builds are as much of a part of Lego's DNA as screaming God damn it!" after stepping on a brick he forgot to put away. But the European Space Agency has just started showing off a new interlocking brick design of their own. The ESA Space Brick. Yep, looks a hell of a lot like a Lego. But the idea here isn't just to give astronauts some toys to help kill time. Now that they've found that missing tomato aboard the International Space Station that we told you about a while back here on your news refresh, please subscribe. See, the idea here is that the ESA's space engineers wanna be able to build and test structures that could be made using mineral fragments from the surface of the moon. We don't have a lot of those minerals known as lunar regolith here on Earth, given this is Earth, not the moon. And we certainly don't wanna start building space housing using any of those 96 bags of human waste we've left behind as moon trash. But these space engineers, being space engineers, came up with a novel solution. They started grinding up a four and a half billion year old meteor that crashed into Africa 20 years ago. You see, the dust from that ground up meteorite was similar enough to lunar regolith to help them 3D print these bad boys here seen in a highly secure briefcase. Lego and the ESA just shared this story. And while the concept of having scientists 3D print millions of these things in space to make giant lunar Lego apartment buildings might sound a bit impractical, these things are part of a project to design and build launch pads and astronaut shelters on the moon. Again, Europe isn't preparing to send inch tall astronauts into space. This is just another way of testing out new building techniques for future lunar structures. And LEGO and the ESA hopes these things will inspire curiosity in children. Thus, they're on display now through September in a handful of LEGO stores across the world, including locations in New York, Chicago, and the Mall of America in Minnesota. And hey, even if space isn't your thing, you're still free to be inspired to create your own LEGO ideas. Like this 550-piece LEGO toilet complete with a flush arm, flapper, and overflow tube that was ultimately not approved for sale. Huh. Too bad. When I saw that, I, my mind kind of went, uh, kind of got lost in thought because I didn't really know what to do or what to handle just because never heard of it. That's a Washington state trooper. And this unexpected encounter he had on Sunday was with this strange creature. You can see it hanging out here on this sign at the Sela Rest Area in Yakima, a travel stop that offers up mountain views, a women's restroom, and drinking fountains under 24 hour surveillance that have earned the place an average of 2.8 stars on Yelp. It turns out this cute little creature here is a member of the raccoon family known as a kinkajou. Yes, a kinkajou. I thought that update was made. I thought it was a joke. My thought was it was some sort of Pokemon. I'm not a very big Pokemon knowledge person, but that's where my mind went to. National Geographic observes kinkajous are mammals that are mostly native to the tropical forests of Central and South America. And they primarily spend their time up in trees, not up in signs surrounding 2.8 star bathrooms. With some additional help, the officer got this kinkajou into the back seat of his car, and it was eventually taken to the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium, where it was placed into quarantine. Poor thin little guy, he really is thin. That's the head vet there who observes this kinkajou as a young male that's underweight but overall healthy. Though like many of us, it was aggressive before being sedated. He does not like people. Um, he has an attitude. He has very sharp teeth, the, the teeth that he has that are intact. Uh, he would make a terrible pet. On Twitter, the zoo pointed out that while these creatures aren't endangered, they are hunted for fur, and that this creature's survival is thanks to the collaborative efforts between the zoo and law enforcement, like the cop who worried the kinkajou could have become barbecue. Trying to prevent it from running off, either getting lost, ran over, or becoming prey, because earlier there was a big crow that was circling around when it saw it, so I figured it was small enough to be prey. In the replies of some of this kinkajou content, Donna, aka Shaw the Damned, wrote, Poor baby, glad he was captured and will now be safe. April Karen Smith wants to give him a lollipop or a gummy worm. And Stephen HNL declared that the search for a new Boeing CEO is over. Okay, now that zoo says they don't have the space to keep this kinkajou long term. Who does these days? And they're searching for another zoo or sanctuary where he can spend the rest of his free time. And as of right now, it's still not clear where this kinkajou came from, but whether it was abandoned intentionally or was simply washing its hands and its road trip friends thought it was in the back seat and drove away without him, our state trooper here is just pleased he was able to help the thing out. You know, later that day I was thinking, man, I only thought the zebras be the wildest animal we saw here in Washington. Oh yeah, recently here on your daily news refresh, please subscribe. We I told you about that too. A bunch of zebras got loose in Washington and uh, uh, then they got caught. It's actually pretty much the whole story, but a uh, good video, right? Finally, can you tell your ass from a hole in the ground? Let's hope so if it's in comparison to this Midwestern soccer field. We uh, 
experienced uh, obviously a big sinkhole in the middle of our turf fields. That's the director of Parks and Recreation in Alton, Illinois. And this footage from Wednesday is at a place called Gordon Moore Park, where the action on the soccer fields wasn't as hot as, say, Georgia upsetting Portugal in Euro 2024. But what's happening on this park's pitch does pick up right now, as a giant sinkhole opens up in the middle of the artificial turf, swallowing a light pole and some bleachers whole. Here's a shot from above. The sinkhole is believed to be around 100 feet wide and 30 to 50 feet deep. And what was one solid ground there is typically populated with kids playing sports. Yeah, I can't imagine it being when we had a bunch of people out here. Uh, yeah, so we're fortunate. By the time we saw it, it had already collapsed. Yeah. It was right around then, whenever, it, it kind of all went at once. It turns out this soccer field was built on top of an operating limestone mine. And the company that runs this local mine claims the sinkhole resulted from surface subsidence, AKA downward vertical movement of the earth's surface. Uh, yeah, checks out. Fortunately, nobody was hurt above or below this thing. You know, they were able to get all of their workers out from underground and the mines, which is the most important thing, you know, everybody sounds like they're they're safe and there was nothing going on obviously at the surface to where, you know, we had any issues up here. The mine company claims it's working with the city to fix the issue of, uh, uh, well, a, a soccer field disappearing. And the Mine Safety Association is starting an investigation into what literally went down. We're kind of waiting to hear back from the, um, from the mine and, um, you know, see what the geologists and the uh, engineers have to say about it and just follow their lead on where to go from here. Um, they can determine, you know, what, what happened, why it happened, how to prevent it, and how we fix what has happened here. Now, if you want to fix what happened here, the fix being subscribing to a YouTube channel you're not subscribed to, hit the subscribe button to get more from your daily news refresh. My name is Greg Ott, and we put out new weird and interesting news stories each and every day. Like this one about a giant wax Abraham Lincoln melting under the hot summer sun, and this one about an $89,000 pair of used pants. Wow, what a world.